Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Today we're going to have a, a return visit really to our Balfouris. Now as you know we've got a number of Balfouris, a number of female Balfouris that we've separated and we have them on their own. I think we have eight females that we keep singularly for the sole purpose for breeding so that we can increase our numbers. Now we also have the communal as well which is doing really, really well. And they're actually reaching adulthood now. So they're really coming into their own. Um, and we've had a lot of mature males come out of that one enclosure. And this is where we're getting our males from. So they literally mature up into our um, communal. And then I catch them. And then I use them because they're coming out nice and fresh. I use them for our females that we have on the, on the shelf here in the single enclosures and we keep our females in a 20 by 20 by 20 cube and this seems to work really well and they get nice and secure in there and we don't have too many problems that being said we did have one egg sac that got eaten a little while back which was rather confusing because we've never had that before with a balfouri they're normally very very good parents so normally what will happen is we pair them up we give it a couple of months and then she will normally settle down and produce an egg sac. And they make like a hammock egg sac, which hangs inside the, um, the burrow to where it is. So it's off the floor and it just hangs. They suspend it. And then normally she will just stay there and look after that. Well, on this particular occasion, it was a young female. She actually ate her egg sac. So we saw it. We jotted down the time. And we went back there some 35 days later and there was just the remains of it. She'd eaten it and there was a few infertile eggs laying on the floor. So I'm not sure whether she understood and realised that maybe this was a bad one. And rather than just abandon it, she literally tore it down and disposed of it. I wouldn't have thought that would have been any good to eat because they were all dry. And I would imagine they were dry in the egg sac as well. That quite often happens when they're infertile. They quite often dry out in the in the sac as well. So um, yeah, that was a little bit confusing. Um, but these things are sent to test us. So it's just another little thing that we jot down in our memory bank. And uh, hopefully we can make use of it later on. It's very important that we we keep a, an eye on these things and try to remember these different bits and pieces that go on within our spiders because it's all helpful stuff. We might have a problem later on where it crops up that, um, you know, something's going on and we're scratching our heads thinking, what on earth's going on here? And then all of a sudden we'll remember, we'll think, ah, oh, hang on, we've been here once before. That was the result. And we can perhaps then work out whether our situation is the same was there a key factor that created this situation? It's all sorts of things to take into account. So very important, keep notes, keep a track of what you're doing. Right, without further ado, let's pop over and have a look at this pairing of the Balfouri and what a stunning little male this fella is. You will see now. Well, here we're about to Put our little male in. Now you can see this uh, this female Balfour. Here he comes. He's in the top there. She's destroyed her enclosure. The bark I have put leaned up against the back on a number of occasions. She always kicks it over and sits on top of it. So we decided just to leave her to it. And we'll see what happens. Now you can see now our male has gone straight in there. And this is something that's very, very obvious with the Balfouri. They don't hang around. They normally get straight on it. Look at the colouring of that male. He's absolutely vibrant. You can see there he's giving tiny little shakes with his legs, holding his pedipalps up high. Look at that. And we are straight in there. Now this is, again, this is quite normal for the female to push back like she did there. And now we're on top of the enclosure, not an ideal situation. But you can see the dexterity of these spiders. It really is quite something else. He's trying to get up there to try and get the upper ground. Remember, all our males, they, they do like to try and get a little bit higher than the females, if at all possible. Now, as long as these guys are maintaining contact, there's never normally that much to worry about with these. They're pretty good. 
you can see the difference in the coloration now you notice with the male very very blue and his carapace is one solid blue and our female is hardly any blue at all she's more of a steely gray color on the carapace you can also see there that she's got a really really well-rounded abdomen she's in prime condition for breeding now although they're in this precarious position you can see our male is still signaling her all the time he's still giving off little tiny shakes and they've never really let go of one another just yet here we are now we're walking the beam amazing how these guys just hang on now we're turning it around now because um i was rather hoping they were going to go back down into the enclosure but the uh they decided to stay where they were look at them they're, they're slowly slowly falling down and we can see there the clear differences in the carapace between the two and also in the size differences he is a big male but she is a much much bigger female You see that he's just shaking that leg there. This is a constant reassurance from him. He's practically holding her there at the same time. Now, bearing in mind these guys are a terrestrial spider and they're now behaving like an arboreal spider. So, we learn something new every day and we see something new every day. I've never yet seen. Our Balfouri literally hanging on the side like this. There we go. He's going in for insemination. You can see slightly there the way her abdomen is moving. He has probably made contact there. You see how he's almost disappeared underneath her. Colouring on his legs is phenomenal. Now, as we were saying, this is really, really is an, an unusual position for these guys. And you can see there, there's only literally, he's holding on by one leg on the top. The other leg doesn't appear to be doing a great deal. Well, we're changing position now. Maybe that was just a little bit too tricky down there. You notice how our female, she is literally outstretched, and this is something that's very common with the Balfouri. If you want to um, enter the world of breeding spiders, the Balfouri are a really, really good starting point. The females are generally pretty good with the males. I think we've only ever lost one male to a female, um, and she killed him instantly. As soon as he entered the burrow, she nailed him. And she had been paired previously, and she did in fact produce a sack from that pairing. So we always have to be careful on the second pairings. Oh, sorry for the shaky camera work there. I was trying to get the camera down lower on the tripod. Because this is an absolutely phenomenal angle now. Although these guys have got it on in a really difficult position. They've given us a fantastic opportunity to see exactly what goes on in a spider pairing. And look at that. You can clearly see the emboli there, which is that red part on the end of the pedipalp. And he is, in, in actual fact, inseminating her. We have penetration as we speak. We can see it there. You can see that the other emboli on the other pedipalp is just relaxed. It's tucked up underneath the pedipalp and it's quite relaxed. And you can see how he, there we go, you can see the emboli going straight the way through. There you go, it's like a needle. You can also see the epigastric furrow of the female. It's very extended. Now, we were lucky enough there to see actual inseminations, the, the actual penetration of that emboli into the epigastric furrow. Now, you can see now with the other, he's using the other pedipalp now, and he's searching. You can just about make out that hair-like thing at the bottom of the pedipalp, that red coloured, it's like a, like a needle. There you go, you see the light catches it, and you can see it's almost like a, 
a flick blade. He can flick that out and now he's searching. He's looking for that epigastric furrow. So everything is done by touch. He can't actually see what he's doing. He's feeling his way. And this is why you'll find on many of the spiders, you see it looks like they're tapping on the female. There you go. Look, he's there. He's penetrated her now. And what we will see now is a slight twist in the end of the pedipalp. You can see that, a very, very slight twist in. He's found the mark. And he is inseminating as we speak. And you can see the pedipalp above. You can clearly see the emboli glistening. You can literally see the light catching it. So these guys are actually getting it on like, like there are arboreal spiders. What a fabulous, fabulous piece of footage this is. You can see there he's working away. Absolutely amazing. Now these are behaving very much like our um, avix. Many of our avix are very, very slow at pairing like this, very methodical. When we compare them to other spiders, things like um, things like our Pisotheria, quite often they literally just stab and run very, very quick. These guys are very subtle. We can clearly see that now again. Keep losing the focus there. It's very difficult to focus. There you go. You can clearly see the emboli penetrating the epigastric furrow. And you can you can see them there. Look at that. A wonderful view. You notice how he twists the pedipalp from side to side because the emboli don't lay actually vertical with the um, with the pedipalp. They lay slightly down the side at an angle. So he has to twist. See how he's twisting that one now? He's penetrated her again. And you can see now he's twisting. And what they're looking for inside, if you look at a spider's molt, when you when we see our females when they when they molt, if you check back and have a look at our um, video of uh, how to sex our spiders by using our molts, you'll see that the the flaps on the female, the epigastric furrow, and quite often you can see in them two like horns, which is the actual sexual organs of the female, and this is what he's trying to penetrate into, into those little horns. And that is where fertilization takes place. You can clearly see them there. Beautiful footage. There we go. It looks like he may well have had enough now. He's probably done. Oh, he's, no, he's going to have another little go. You notice our female hasn't moved. She hasn't done anything. There you go. He's backing off. He's done the job. He's finished. Now you notice how he's maintaining contact with her. He's touching her all the time. He's still touching her now. You can just see his legs in the background there. Now he's safe. He's let go of her. And you can see there that our female is in that um, stage of that trance-like stage that female Balfour is often end up sitting in. Now we can have a real good clear look at the uh, extended epigastric furrow now on this female. And this shows just how ready and willing to pair she was. Fantastic. Very, very clear there. And she's in no rush to move. Our male has wandered off. Now you'll notice there that um, we're not worrying about catching our male up. He won't go far. And when you're pairing your spiders, it's important to just relax and let them do their thing. They're not going to disappear. They're not going to go anywhere. Absolutely fantastic pairing. Very, very pleased with that. We're now going to go and walk about, see if we can't get a little bit better angle. There you go. She's just now come out of that stage of her trance-like stage. And she's now coming over the top of the enclosure. There's our male. He's on top of the desk. What a handsome fella he is. Absolutely stunning. That's got to be one of the best male Balfourers I have ever seen. Gorgeous spider. 
and there is a lot of variation in the males. They're not all as bright as him. Here she goes, she's having a little wander. Right, I think it's time we um, remind her where she lives. What a fabulous pairing. Fingers crossed for some success. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was pretty cool. You see the colours on that male. They are absolutely superb. And sometimes our males can come out and they're quite grey looking. And other times we get ones like this boy. He is absolutely vibrant. He could really give a run for the money for some of the other blue spiders in the hobby. He is absolutely wonderful. Looks amazing. Now, one of the things you would have noticed there was um, our Balfouri spiders are a terrestrial spider. Now, these guys decided to get jiggy and uh, basically show us a few new moves. Well, they went up onto the side of the glass and we're becoming arboreal now. You know, we're showing everyone what it's all about. And uh, at one point there, I thought maybe I might need to just coax them back down again. But he seemed adamant that he could get it on from where he was. So it was worth leaving them to it. And as it happens, we got that wonderful shot where we're the other side of the glass and we can see clearly the emboli working away. Has he inseminated that female? You'll see her epigastric furrow, how it swells up and opens up. She is really, really um, ready for this interaction. And, uh, and you can see that clearly in the camera. It's very, very clear. Now, when you saw the male, you notice how he actually inserted the emboli. And then you see him, he's just twisting very, very gently, very gently. And then he withdrew, swapped around, put the other one in done the other side. So he's using both them emboli and he used them both on a number of occasions, which begs the question. Sometimes with some of our spiders, some of the pokies, when they mate, they literally dive in, stab, boom, gone. It's in an instant. You regulars would have remembered the Singapore blue. Loads and loads and loads of you commented, I didn't think that was successful. He never, he never paired her. And it didn't matter what I said to try and reassure people, they still wouldn't have it that he had actually inseminated that female because it was so, so quick. Even when you slowed it down into so slow motion, you couldn't quite catch it. It was that fast. Now, uh, with the Balfouri there, you see it's an entirely different thing. He took his time. You know, he's very, very gentle, very much like the Avix. They're a similar sort of spider in the way that they pair. Very, very gentle, very methodical. And it seems to work really well. And it might be one of the reasons that we get a, a high success rate with our Balfouris is because they actually spend the time to inseminate properly. Whereas some of the others, like the Singapore Blue, the Pokies, all the different Pokies, it's a very much a bit of a stab in the dark and let's hope for the best. It could be something in that, you know. We've had many times where we've mated our, um, our piece of theria uh, Metallicas, we've done all, all sorts of them, all the way through the genus. And we've had success with some, and we've had some that just haven't done anything at all. So is it because that little stab just wasn't successful enough? You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Makes you wonder, in the wild state, does this actually slow them down? You know, is the success rate any better in the wild? We just don't know. We, we will never know. And yet we often try and compare our successes with the successes from the wild and yet we don't really know how successful our spiders are in the wild you know it could be a case of a female may well get um she may well get paired in her lifetime you know say for argument's sake 20 times in her lifetime she might only produce one or two sacks in the whole of that time so it's something to bear in mind. It's a, it's a really interesting aspect of the hobby. We can often um, manoeuvre things around and we can make things work in our favour. We can get our spiders in tip-top condition. We can get them acclimatised. We can do everything feasibly possible, everything within our power, to make sure that our spiders are in perfect shape. And we give them every opportunity to do that. In the wild, that's not the case. So... 
You know, it's a, it's a, a very, very interesting thought. And something that's really worth, you know, having to think about when you're, when you're playing around with your spiders. We just do not know what they do in the wild. It's a, it's a myth. It really is. So we saw in there with our Balfouri, a really, really cool pairing. Now, when it's come down to um, producing egg sacs with our Balfouri, we've had sacs produced within six weeks of a pairing. That's, I think that's been the earliest, about five weeks, I think, was about the earliest we've ever had. And uh, the longest we've taken is nearly nine months for an egg sac to be produced. Now, on one of these occasions, both spiders were on the same shelf. So they had exactly the same care, the same temps, exactly the same place in the room. And yet, for whatever reason, one female hung on and hung on and hung on until eventually she gave a sack. Both of them were equally good sacks at the end of the day, but there was this massive time gap between pairing. They got both got paired at the same time, but they didn't drop at the same time. So again, it's more going on than we really realize. We just do not understand. We are only scratching the surface of what these guys can do and, and what they're all about. And it's it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating to um to try and break down the information and work out where we maybe where we're going wrong or where we're going right even we don't even know where we're going right half the time it's all about trying to get that information down and then you know checking it against information in the future and what have you and, and just working it out like that so it's very 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 cool and i would urge every one of you anyone that's keeping their spiders you don't have to be breeding them just keeping them you know, take down your malt dates, check out things like that, even down to feeding. Now, I don't personally keep a record of feeding, but if you do keep a record of feeding, you'll be surprised. You know, there's some interesting trends there. So you can, for argument's sake, keep a, keep a, um, a note of the time of year, keep a note of the temperatures, whether it's raining outside, whether it's dry, you know, all these things. And then every time you offer food, put it down in the diary that, oh, she ate that piece. No, she refused that food. We removed it. Try it again in two weeks' time or whatever it might be. And just get that thing. And you'll be surprised. After a year, maybe two years, you can look back on that information and it will tell you so much about your spider. The time it takes them to molt at different ages you know, when they're younger, they molt much quicker. So, you know, we know that some of our brachypalmas can go oh, a couple of years between molts. So it can be very frustrating if you're trying to breed them. Um, but this is all information that's very, very valuable. So even if you're not breeding, you're just keeping your spiders. Do it as an exercise. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun and you'll, you'll be quietly surprised at the different things that you pick up and what you learn from that information. It's very, very cool. Right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to wait. Um, we will have one more pairing in a week's time. Now, this is something that we uh, we often get asked about, the breeding of the spiders. And unfortunately, there is no one answer to many of the questions that we get asked about breeding spiders. Often or not, there's lots and lots and lots of different things that come into play that we do or don't do and things like that. So... It's very difficult to answer um, a question in black and white when the answer normally is very colourful. So it's got to be, it's, it's, you've got to read between the lines a little bit. But um, we will now, we always pair our spiders twice, regardless whether we've had a really good insemination or not. We always pair them twice. So we can, um, she was paired today as, uh, well, Yesterday, as this video went out, this has gone out on Monday, we paired her on the Sunday. So she's been done. Now we will wait until next weekend and we will pair her again. One thing I will say to you, if you are breeding your Balfouris, be prepared for the second pairing because you saw there that our female, she came out very, very happy. She was good as gold. Our male was in there, you know, everything was working fine and they seemed to be the best of friends. Second time round, it can go either way. Sometimes with our Balfouri, she will come out exactly the same and she'll be lovely and all laid back and they'll pair again. Another time, she will come out like a tornado and want to kill him. 
So it's very important on your second pairings, whatever you pair, whatever you're trying to breed, always be prepared on the second pairing because quite often or not, our females are in an entirely different frame of mind the second time around. So just a little tip, keep your eyes on it if you're actually uh, intending on breeding yourself. Just be aware of that little tiny snippet of information because it can mean the life and death of your spider. So we're always very, very careful when we introduce our male the second time around. He will be just as keen as ever. It's her. It's her reaction that makes the difference. Right. Well, I hope you found that um, enjoyable to watch and, uh, and, and got some good bits of um, insight into how these guys work. And we had some lovely close up footage there, some really, really cool footage. And um, hopefully it's all come together and made a really, really nice video and, uh, and you enjoyed it immensely. It really was quite, quite cool to actually make this one, considering that we breed a lot of Alphoris. Um, we just thought on the off chance we'll just video them again because we haven't shown them in such a long time. So, uh, yeah, very, very cool. Right then, without further ado, don't forget, hit the like button. It really does help, really helps us out. And just remember, be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders. And I will see you soon, guys.